Tonight on the edge, hate in Heartland. Anti-Semitic flyers were found outside people's homes. And they say this isn't the only evidence of hate seen in the community. Yeah, I think it scares people, which is obviously their objective. Julie Ohashi is the president of Livingston Integrity, a group committed to democracy, honesty, and transparency in a community she says is experiencing an uptick in hate. Growing up here, I've seen plenty of flyers in our community of hate, like from white supremacy groups. But lately, she says it's gotten worse in her small town of Heartland, a swastika on a tree near her home, anti-LGBTQ propaganda. And that's not all. Last month, my neighborhood saw multiple hate crimes, including numerous stolen pride flags that were turned up later burned on the beach. And now we're seeing this anti-Semitic fear mongering propaganda. That anti-Semitic propaganda in the form of disturbing flyers left in people's driveways. They printed a bunch of color flyers, these anti-Semitic fly color flyers. They stuffed them inside baggies. They included deer food what we're assuming so that they wouldn't blow away and then they toss them into the entire subdivision's driveways in this um, Heartland subdivision. Flyers with photos of pretty awful acts. It's extremely disturbing. If a child found these, uh, it would be, I would be extremely upset as a parent. They're trying to associate pedophilia with Jewish practices. Ohashi says she has contacted the police as well as the Anti-Defamation League. It is asking people to be on the lookout. People need to take note of the vehicles that are doing this, um, photos and videos if they safely can do so. Um, so at least the cops can follow up and have conversations with these people. People who she says need to be stopped. More people are not these hateful creatures that are coming out of the shadows. You know, more people care and love and are concerned and they're watching out for one another. So it will be just a matter of time before they're caught. Call police if you have any information. Absolutely, right? absolutely. Good stuff. All right. Glad that they're hopefully they're getting to the bottom of it. Also tonight as dangerous fentanyl laced drug cocktails get stronger. First responders are burning through Narcan in an attempt to save lives. Fox 2's Dave Kinchin has more on the effort to get the life saving treatment to those who need it most. The opioid crisis is escalating across Metro Detroit, and just one dose of Narcan administered by first responders to save an overdose victim is no longer enough like it was just a few years ago. We saw that single dose uh, administration of, of Narcan being effective. Now we're seeing it not be effective. It's requiring that second and third and, and, and ultimately maybe four or five doses, whatever we, 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 ha we, we uh, have to combat that. Farmington Hills Police Chief Jeff King is just one of many law enforcement officials across Oakland County working to get more resources into the hands of his officers in order to save more lives. But now that fentanyl is being mixed with the animal tranquilizer xylazine, also known as Trank on the streets, making the fentanyl more deadly, there's an even bigger problem. As as bad as fentanyl is, xylazine is another level, um, and there's nothing to counteract that. Like our officers do not have the 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 uh, medical grade uh, counteracting agents uh, for xylazine that we have for Narcan. It, it being it, it, with Narcan and, and fentanyl and, and the opioids. Law enforcement is hopeful the medical community can come up with an answer there asap. More and more drug enforcement teams throughout the area say they're finding fentanyl in cocaine, marijuana, and in pill form. The mixture into weed is how Mary DePaolo's brother Gordon died in March of 2020. This is a picture of him at age 50, seven years before he passed away. There are excellent addictionologists, you know, doctors who specialize in addiction medicine who are local to our area. If you don't want to go to a rehab, you don't want to go to Brighton Hospital, you don't want to go to St. Mary's, yeah, you can actually um, get help by going outpatient to an addictionologist, mm. get all the medication you need to help you through your withdrawal symptoms. But to get clean, she says, you have to really want it. You give them the hand up, they need to do the work in order to live their life on the sober path. And it is possible. I've seen the miracles happen. Meantime, the feds have been sounding the alarm at the national level. The administrator of the DEA says that xylazine has made the country's deadliest drug threat, fentanyl, even deadlier. The feds say they have found mixtures of xylazine in 48 of the 50 states. In Detroit, Dave Kinchin on the edge. 
A dispute at a Monroe Township business leads to gunshots there. Tonight, an elderly man is facing charges for shooting at employees. We're told the violent encounter went down yesterday morning at a business on South Telegraph near West Albane. The gunman didn't hit any employees, but he took off after the shooting. Police caught up with Thomas Haddix at another business in Frenchtown Township and took him into custody. The 77 year old man was charged with assault with intent to murder, but was only given a $25,000 bond. And in Detroit, a judge lowers the bond for a gas station clerk charged in a deadly shooting at his business. Al Hassan Ayash is accused of locking three innocent customers inside a store before another man who you just saw there opened fire, killing one of them. He's charged with involuntary manslaughter. The clerk is. His bond was set at $100,000 cash, but today Judge Kenneth King reduced that to 100,010%. That means he can go free by paying a bondsman $10,000. Ayash will be on a GPS tether and under house arrest if he posts bond. I probable cause that um, Marcos Pispicus most likely committed the offense. All these matters are passed over. Three of the four suspects charged in connection with the murder of Oak Park jeweler Daniel Hutch Hutchinson are ordered to stand trial. The defendants are Marco Bisbikas, Angelo Rapitopoulos, and Roy Larry, the accused shooter. Prosecutors say Bisbikas worked with three other men to have Hutchinson murdered so he could benefit from the victim's will. The fourth suspect, Darnell Larry, is working with prosecutors and testifying against the others. Prosecutors say he tried to warn the Hutchinsons about the murder plot. Well, some tragic news out of Ingham County tonight. That's where an MDOT worker was killed in a crash this afternoon. This happened in the area of East Grand River near North M52 in Leroy Township. That's just west of Weberville. We're told an eastbound vehicle st struck a 70-year-old construction flag worker from Hillsdale. He was directing traffic in a work zone and died from his injuries. The driver, a 23-year-old woman from Williamston, suffered minor injuries. While this case is still under investigation, under Michigan law, drivers who kill someone in a construction work zone can receive a fine of up to $7,500 and 15 years in prison. We'll turn into weather here. We've got Derek Caver to tell us as we get closer to Memorial Day. We're under a frost advisory? We are under a frost <laughs> advisory. Unbelievable, Derek. What's yeah, going on? I know. Uh, you guys know what today is outside of the frost advisory. No, it's Thursday. Day, day, <laughs> yes, that's that not inaccurate. Uh, day six. Day six. Day six of 14 days. Without rain. Without rain. Are okay. you kidding you know, me? I did think wild. about that this morning yeah. when I woke up. I totally forgot. I mean, I know You're you right. did. That yes. was an important, but that's a, a good point. You know what tomorrow is? Seven day days. Day seven. So, yeah, <laughs> it just it goes down the line until we get to 14. Uh, it is an interesting thing, though, guys. Let's take a look at some of these uh, statistics here. As we look ahead, 14 days. We are going to hit 14 days of no rain. That is not normal. In fact, this May so far is ending up shaping up as the fifth driest May of all time. But that 14 day stretch is an interesting one because over the last 10 years, we have not gotten close to it. I looked at the last 10 Mays and Junes and I mapped out the longest stretch of no rain and last year had eight and that's the closest one to us. It's nowhere near 14. Most years we get like five days without rain and then we see a front come through. But boy, 14. Yeah, that's an abnormality. All right, let's take a look at why we are not going to see the rain. It is this high pressure. It is a strong area of high pressure. It is actually what is called a Rex block, which means that the atmosphere is blocked. There's nothing moving it. There's nothing coming. There's nothing going. So we are stuck with what we got and we got some sunshine and warming temperatures and actually a pretty decent stretch here, certainly in time for the holiday. We love seeing that. Here's Fox Futurecast. No pause points in Fox Futurecast because I have nothing to show you outside of maybe a few clouds late in the day on Saturday into Sunday. Temperatures right now, they are dropping. If you live in areas Oakland County, Livingston County, Macomb County or North, you have a frost advisory till early tomorrow morning. What that means is you want to make sure you cover the sensitive plants, you know, the small ones you just planted, whether they're vegetables, fruits or flowers. If you're worried about them, I would say get outside and cover them up. 72 degrees. Let's take a look at the next three days. First, we've got numbers that are going to get to 72, 77 to 81, but I know you want to look past that into the holiday weekend, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Take a look here. The next seven days, boy, this is a very nice, a very warm seven day forecast. Here we go from the low 70s all the way to the upper 80s and maybe even 90 degrees by Wednesday and Thursday of next week. Those overnight lows, those are in the 60s. In the lineage of the house and techno music background here is insane. So it's kind of like a Mecca, you know, you have to come here. 
Detroit's Movement Festival returns to Detroit this weekend. The three day electric music concert brings people from all over the world like that man you just heard from. He flew in from England. Tens of thousands of people are expected to dance to the beats in Hart Plaza. Movement kicks off on Saturday. And just one week later, Detroit will rev up for the Grand Prix. Yeah, what an exciting time in our city. But this year, the race cars will be speeding through downtown Detroit, not by a while. Fox 2's Charlie Langton has more on the big event. There's 15 cities in the world, in the world, that have this opportunity, and we are one of them. Obviously, talking about the Chevrolet Detroit Grand Prix presented by Lear. We have strategized on parking. We have strategized on keeping all of our community safe, those who live, work, and visit this event. And we are just super excited. It's been 32 years since the Grand Prix was last in the city of Detroit. But this year, Friday through Sunday, June 2nd through the 4th, get ready, Detroit, and free pre-day is Friday, June 2nd. You're going to see a lot of our mounted officers down here. Those are the horses, uh, so don't, you know, that, they're just so welcome uh, with the community, and, and we're going to have a lot of them out here, as well as officers on foot. And nothing will be taken away from the neighborhoods. The chief will be working with the feds and others to make sure everybody's safe. Oh, and just for the race weekend, the speed limit's going to be changing. We have have decided that we're going to raise the speed limit for the race cars on the track for that weekend only to 200 miles an hour. I think that's just for the Indy cars on the racetrack. Anyway, remember when the Grand Prix was down here in Detroit before? I worked down here in the 80s when the Grand Prix was here. It was fabulous. The streets were filled. Businesses benefited. All right, again, the race will kick off a week from tomorrow. If you plan on going, you can go to DetroitGP.com to find out your parking options, which you'll want to know about. Shuttles, by the way, will be provided.